Good afternoon. Mm -hmm. It is this afternoon. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I lose track. We welcome you to the service of Holy Communion, right to, on this, the fifth Sunday in Lent. Our guest celebrant today is the Reverend Deborah Reagan, and everything you will need for the service is in your bulletin and hymn book. The words in bold are for you, the congregation, to speak. Please stand and let us sing, If Thou Trust in God, to guide thee, hymn number 
Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophecy to these bones, and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophecy to the bread, to the bread, prophecy, mortal, and say to the bread, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon those slain that they may live. I prophesied, and he commanded me, as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, our hope is lost, and we are cut off completely. Therefore prophecy, and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves, and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know, I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us read Psalm 130 responsibly by whole verse. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, mercy out what, what is done in this, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you. Therefore, you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord. My, my soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him, with him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. A reading from the New Testament, from Paul's letter to the Romans. To set the mind on the flesh is death. But to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot, <coughs> and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the spirit. Since the spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, through the body, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. The spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will give your life to mortal bodies, also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand as you are able. And let us sing hymn 455.
Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death, rather it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after her having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going to go are you going there again? And Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? And then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, Already there is a stench because he's been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? And so they took away the stone. 
And Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I've said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said, when he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! And the dead man came out, his hands and his feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. And many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. 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 You don't mind I'm going to sit between the rails. I feel like it keeps me honest. <laughs> I've been preaching sitting down since my knees were replaced. And I found out I liked it because I could really see people and I was talking to them generally from their own level, which was good too because then I wasn't talking down at them. It's a mark, remarkable the difference that a position will make. Now, I want to talk about the first lesson because I love it. I get inspiration from this one every single year. I can see the heap of dry, dry bones. And the prophet is standing in front of it thinking, what is he thinking now? What does he want from me? What can I possibly do with these dry, dry bones? And I can see him standing there with his arms akimbo going, okay. And then he settles down to do exactly what God told him to do. He calls the bones together. And I can hear them rattling in my mind. He calls the bones together and they join. And the cartilage comes back. And he calls the flesh to come to the bones. And then he calls the skin and calls the breath. And it moves and lives again. And I'm thinking, wow. And so I look out at us and I think, can these bones live? Can these bones live? And if the Lord had not called me in the middle of the pandemic, to start this course of moving to Richmond, of going back to seminary, to becoming involved in the business of the church again vitally, I would say probably not, but it is that motivating spirit, that motivating spirit that I trust. And it arose in me to do the work. And I figure, even at 72, if that spirit arises in me to do the work, then by darn, I'm going to do it. So here I am. God knows these are dry bones. When I was at convention, we know it too. I, when I was at convention, I learned that in the Episcopal Church, the average Sunday attendance across the nation is 20. I think we beat that today certainly close to it. That is a number I would like to forget. I really would. I remember feeling such sympathy for my bishop who, when I first started in 1997, there were 82 Episcopal churches in West Virginia. 25 years later, there are 52. The rest were closed or sold. And I, my heart went out to my bishop that he had to preside over the loss of so many churches. When I heard about what we're doing here, the reason I'm here today, that we were going to empower the laity to lead the church and that we were going to use priests only for the sacraments, I thought, boy, that's using your head. 
I've done cluster ministry since the first. I would do two, three churches on a Sunday and go from one to the one to the next one. Up in the mountains of West Virginia. All of those people mourned the loss of three services on a Sunday or two services that were full. And there was some heartbreaking story to go with every church that I knew that I had in my care. And I heard all of those stories and carried them around in my heart and prayed for them day by day by day. So many times we didn't know how we were going to possibly get to the end of the year. It's like, you talk about a faith budget. This is more than a faith budget. This is standing on the end and jumping off. <laughs> and we did it year after year after year. For 25 years, I thought I was living with one foot on a banana peel. And I'm like, this can only continue because the Spirit of God is with these people. There is no way that this should go on. And yet it does. Why? There are in those bare homes the DNA of a new church. And by darn, we are going to we're going to put it back together. Every time you do the work of Lent, every time you start the work of forgiveness in yourself and with others, and you have to do the work in yourself because it's the work that you do to forgive yourself for the stupid stuff you've done and the hurtful things that you've done and the faithful things that you've done. When you begin that work in your own heart, you release energy to forgive others. So that that forgiveness that begins here goes out to your relationships. So the work of forgiving yourself creates a space in which God is welcomed, and that welcome goes out of you to others. So it begins here. I worked on this. I was an abused child, and I worked on this for 10 years to release the anger, to release the pain, to release all of that stuff and I took Jesus with me to every one of those places and asked him to heal them. And I kept asking him until they stopped hurting. And when they stopped hurting, they start, stopped having power over me. They stopped running my decisions. They stopped ruining my plans. I can't tell you how many times when we have unresolved anger inside of ourselves, how many times it trips us up day after day after day. You begin that work here, and it goes out into the world. So when we begin that work of forgiveness, we start calling the flesh onto those bones. When we continue the work of forgiveness in the community, we call the sinew to that carcass. And when we call the Spirit of God to bring life to the work that we do, it rises and does the work that God has given us to do as a church. <clears throat> I was telling somebody today that the work that we did at St. Peter's during the pandemic, we put $200,000 a year into the community to feed people who were drug addicted, starving, cold. We started with a little blessing box down at the corner put food in it. First we put it on Sundays only and then we were putting it in every day and before you knew it, we were channeling food out of there. My experience with the Holy Spirit is when you turn something over to him, stand back. Somebody asked me, what did you do? And I looked at them and I said, I held the naysayers back. That's all I did, I held them back and I kept praying, I never stopped praying. I never stopped praying. Because I know the power and intelligence of God is there to help me. And every chance I get, I reach for it. Every chance I get, I make sure that God is included in whatever plan we're trying out. I look for that help because I know it's there. I can count on it. And that incredible blessing that comes to us when we 
walk in the way of God and find there what we need is truly remarkable. As long as you keep doing the stuff that hurt you, you never really get straight with God. God requires you to keep the commandments and the love command is absolutely required. And as you do that, the way opens before you. And that opening way is light in life. Jesus is standing before a dead piece of flesh and bone that was his friend. And he tells him, get up. Lazarus, come out. I wish I had that much faith. Or I could wait two days after he was dead before I made the trip. <sighs> I panic if I can't get to the hospital when somebody's having surgery. I can't imagine this kind of faith. The depth and height and breadth of it. That God is going to come through and raise his friend even after he already has a stench. They asked me in church today, Jesus has impossible goals. How can we ever do that? I said, it's showing you what can be done. And I still believe that it can be done. I just don't know how to do it. I know that Jeremiah stood there and called the breath. And I know that Jesus stood there and called the breath of the Holy Spirit back. Can you imagine God coming at your call? Wow. That, just, that is a wonderful, mind-boggling thought. Obviously, got a long way to go. But, ah, oh, the trip so far has been wonderful. And I want to tell you that the vision of what God has done for us is what builds the vision of the future, the vision of eternity lived with God. And I'll tell you, it looks mighty good to me because I have been seeing a lot of powerful stuff going on. I believe in eternal life because I see life growing and coming up all around me. And that life is the life of God. Let us pray. On this day, when we remember the return of life with the gift of the Holy Spirit, I ask you, Lord, to bless us, to call flesh to these bones, to call sinew, to call skin and life and breath. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
with the Father and Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Please stand or kneel as you are able. for shut-ins for Mary Lynn and Sharon. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, for Charlotte's birthday. We exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, especially those who died in Grenado in Mississippi. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. To put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy on us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And to uphold us by your Holy Spirit, that we may live and serve you in the newness of to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All God, Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
God. It is, it is right, right to give him thanks, thanks and praise. <clears throat> it is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O oh God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you, in him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ, and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with Michael and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us take the faith.
pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual 